Okay, let's uh, begin our second part. And uh, I'm very excited if I can, if this work that I can mix it, make it into two parts, then I can uh, do things that are more involved with you guys. Uh, that takes longer time, but we'll see. Okay, when I edit, then I'll know, um, you know, if I actually have the capacity to do so. So while I was, uh, while I finished the first part, I look into it and I think the uh, the uh, composition called for a branch that's coming out here behind this leaf. So I put a pencil mark and I changed this uh, just a little bit. Okay, so uh, it's good to take a step back sometimes and look. And then I find that um, some of the color had come into has come into this uh, leaf of the cat layer. So I uh, kind of use a, a harder brush, the same number two brush, and just soften it up. And I and we're very lucky. And then there's another one. You can see that it had come into the the petal. And so I'm quite confident that we can just kind of get this soften up, and that become kind of shadowy part, which is uh, really fine with me. I love an opportunity like that. Then I can um, just uh, you know show you what I do. You know, so to speak, to rescue myself, right? And the watercolor take a lot of rescuing. And I just saw, okay, right here, I kind of want to define the space over here a little bit of the background. And so I'm coming with a very sharp pointed zero brush. Um, and I uh, get that dispersed out, okay? And then that will be, you bring out this petal a little bit more. Now, a uh, long time ago, not long time ago, when I started filming in YouTube, I used this one, the zero. It's a size zero, also from oh Princeton. Actually, I think I got this one from um, a Black Art Supply, and the uh, and the problem is the the tip of the brush is gone. I mean, I can still use it, so that's why I have it right next to me. You know, sometimes you need to come in and clean up things. That that is fine, but you know, when sometimes when it comes to points, I usually go with my trusty. Um, brushes you know and uh, these are from oriental art supply if you care to get one or um, see what it is you can go to my um, blog sunsetpeony.com and now I'm using a clean brush and dip uh, in paint spray okay and maybe I will dip a little bit into the uh, dioxazine purple okay and I we're gonna start working on the on the orchid the, uh, the cat layer orchid okay uh, just a little bit of color little bit of pigment so little and then I'm I'm coming in clean up the brush dab it dry and then pull the color out okay so um, uh, last year or the year before I don't even know how long I've been on YouTube I uh, know more than two years and uh, I I uh, uh, painted a watercolor lily the in the Beauty of the Lily, Christ was born across the sea. Um, uh, that uh, inspired by that is a white lily, and I talk about uh, painting white flower, right? And also, I have you know, I have done other white flower. It's always we're just painting the shadow, but shadow can be very lively, right? We we do not want to think that just because something is called shadow, it has to be just gray. You can put gray, you can put purple, you know, uh, brown. Even there's actually a lot of color okay now i'm going to intensify this area because that's the really the 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 middle part of the of the the uh, orchid and so i am going to come here and soften it up so make sure that one is to remind me that it's there and then second is to you know make sure that it uh, i don't forget it and then <laughs> somehow fill it up okay and we'll keep going with the now um, with this zero brush and uh, dip in uh, pink gray and dioxazine purple. Okay, and now I'm gonna come over here and do a little vein and that droop down. Just kind of gives us some pretty style. That's what I like to do. And so the vein in the middle is actually going to be a little bit, it has a little bit of a uh, width to it. So that's why I put two vein right there. And now come soften it, the same thing. Okay, and then come over here and maybe I'll just use the dioxazine purple and just uh, flick uh, the, the vein on there. And then I'll, I'll soften it too because it takes softening. 
it takes softening softening is uh, actually kind of you know so it's not so sharp the line sometimes there's reason for sharp line and sometimes line need to be nice and soft i tend to like to do the um when i'm doing flowers have the line being kind of soft okay that's really fun and so i was in the middle of telling you so i was uh, uh, I was at this uh, jungle, it's called Mulu National Park in Malaysia. And so what I'm going to do is like, just leave that alone for a minute and then come back for the second step. And I'll show you. Okay, same thing with a clean zero brush and go dip the tip on the dioxin purple plus pink gray. So it's kind of like a darker purple color. And uh, so I was, uh, I, I did really bad. I, I think I did <laughs> uh, quite a bad job. Uh, you know, with some of the, but I did the best I can. It was very hot. It was very humid. And the hike that we go on, we actually just, uh, we were actually hiking in, uh, you know, silt. Like my husband called it silt. I think what he means is sand that are saturated with water. And I was taken by the beauty, you know, of the jungle. But it is a hard thing. It was very, very hot, and it was very loud. The, cic the cicada was very, very loud, and uh, but it was still beautiful. I didn't regret going. It was just a very hard and a hard trip. I would say hard hiking, and my knee was acting up. Uh, one of my knee was kind of broken at that point. I didn't know how to fix it, so it was uh, very, very painful for me. Now. Since this is white and this uh, area is kind of blurry, so I'm going to take some dioxin purple and actually line this up okay, gently and softly. And then I'll come uh, just to define it a little bit more. I usually don't outline my flower, but there is a need over here so that one can see that clearly. Okay, drop a big drop of water over here. Okay, and now we're going to take this and uh, my um, trusty trusting a uh, happy dog brush that are kind of you know old <laughs> don't know how else to explain it just old and then i'm going to dip it in uh, now these are my dioxin purple when i say dip it i'm doing this okay just like that okay on the tip and what i'm going to do is come over here to the to the uh, side and feather it it with this uh, spread open so there's a certain width to it so that I can, uh, 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 sorry, so that I can do some feathering just like that. Now you can see that, right? But I want to do that lighter because over here is darker. And I, I really uh, wanted to do some shadow over here too, okay? Just uh, very lightly here and there. See, I, I may, you know, I may, may I say so that I just really like the beauty of that. And then I'm going to go back with my... Uh, zero brush and get pink gray and then do some do some thicker shadow area and then you when when I do that you will see the waviness of the of the petal okay the shape together with the shadow and the form you know will make that uh, become a little wavy I just very much like that uh, be able to do that kind of thing with art okay same thing Go in with some pink gray, and I think the shadow will be over here. And uh, sometimes a lot of you might think, uh, you know, want to know how I get my inspiration. You know, seriously, most of my inspiration come from days and days of research, and sometimes even longer. Sometimes it uh, take me a couple years or a few years before I would come to the conclusion of how to paint a certain thing. And then I just allow myself because I wanted to be able to study. And so, and then I start drawing. And when I start drawing, sometimes it will come from my mind. And sometimes it will come from, uh, I will look at photos or, uh, you, uh, or uh, uh, go to my neighbor's house or my own house and see things. And then I will um, just go from there. So there's a shadow. You can see folding shadow right there. Okay, that's the same thing over here okay and the same thing go to your zero brush or whatever brush that you know you can fan out like this okay uh, actually let's uh, get some water and clean it up nice first okay and just uh, kind of push it down and dip that in the dioxin purple and then come in and feather that in with 
because I think I think this one I actually went to the nursery and see it because I don't I'm not like uh, quite confident sometimes I get bored and so I don't buy orchid in my house unless sometimes my husband get it for me and then you know they died and such you know I yeah sometimes you know with people like me OCD and I I uh, forget about them and then I said oh I forgot about them and then you know they're not doing very well so I went to the nursery we have uh, this place in Provo uh, actually it's in Orem called the Sun River nursery I like going there now why am I doing it so light because I'm waiting to do it darker in the middle I don't want the this flicking you know take away from it too much and give um, uh, reserve the intensity to that part okay and so uh, and then uh, it's the shadow time okay and then I'm going to just put some shadow right here I think okay dip that zero brush in and do that okay and then do some kind of like a triangle shape and then quickly come back clean the brush up dry it dry my finger <laughs> and then uh, do that now what I'm still trying to get to you is uh, so we were in the in the Moon National Forest and I saw and so I, I realized that I am not good enough to paint the the density of the jungle forest and so I start um, I, you know I was very intrigued by the tree and so I start painting trees um, because it's easier for me to you know and you see if I really get around to showing you my sketches um, and then one time one day uh, the the uh, man you know we were there I think either three days I, I don't remember um, and I'll tell you a little bit more in a minute and uh, he was like what are you painting I just I'm trying to uh, paint the structure of the of the tree and the they call that the parasite vines yeah, and um, and I think orchid is kind of parasite too it was so I that's when I first saw this in the wild and how they actually uh, cling themselves to the to the tree and the root was just hanging but there was no real orchid flower because um, the the native people we we get to know a group of young men two three of them and they told us that oh you, you've come at the wrong season and so we don't actually see the orchid but I see the root and some of the leftover dead uh, things around and around there and so that was kind of fun for me I really enjoy I really have enjoyed that you know just standing there and painting the tree uh, that was really fun and uh, I, I actually remember I've done one of the tr of one of the tree with this parasite vine, and so I can show that to you, if I have time. And I did, uh, and I also will do a banana leaf here, not very far distant from now, so that it will be the theme of kind of, you know, I don't know what you call it, jungleish. <laughs> uh, okay, the same thing. I'm gonna I'm going to do these two leaves now. Okay, and uh, jungleish or you know, um, uh, painting of Kathy. Just uh, feel like it's time to do that. And I did a lot and, you know, was, uh, I still, um, that's the part of, uh, now I put a line there, actually, I'm trying to do a shadow. Um, that's the thing about um, sketching when you're on location, when you're having a hard time going hiking trip. I don't know, that's what I do with my husband. And now I'm going to get, let's get some paint spray and do the shadow okay so the heart i mean the middle part of this petal is coming from here okay so let's go in and paint the shadow uh, let's uh, paint some of the shadow and uh, when uh, you come home and you're finishing your sketches and making them a little bit better you know the urban is an urban sketching group they they have they have rules and they are very very strict about like you need to um you know finish the painting on location or you know um uh you know i i do understand though because they feel like it's very crisp and fresh when you do so and uh that is uh that is uh, something that is very important i think you know uh, so that's uh, one of the reason i i don't like to mix uh, color too much they can mix on the page that will make them nice and crisp but i don't like to mix them on um on the on the on the palette 
or my little plate over here because it is, uh, and then come soften it, okay? Just put a dab and then come soften that. And we'll do the same thing on here um, because it will take away from the crispness. And uh, for my uh, sketching in Mulu, the same thing, okay? We're just painting the shadow part, okay? Outline this just a little bit. Um, uh, I come home and I work on it, you know, quite a bit. And I know that uh, it take away the crispness, the crispness. And so um, it, when I show it to you, you guys uh, uh, will know that I, you know, I'm still learning and trying to get better at uh, sketching outdoor. It's hard. It's a little, it's a lot harder than doing it in your studio. The temperature, the dryness or the moist of the air all play a role in your uh, and so you need to adapt to situation and that's part of the fun right okay now let's uh, go and do uh do the quinacodone quinacodone uh, violet okay that i have this i've told you guys <laughs> reason why i have that right for many many times is because i my tube just dry out and i say ah there's so many good ink in there Good paint in there. I'm gonna try to now. You can see a certain whiffness, uh, the whiff of the whiffness, whiff, and then I'm going to come over here and soften it. Soften this side first, this side first, and then come over here and soften this side also. Okay, but and then what I'm gonna do is that this is what I did in my practice, and uh, come over and get some more pigment, get some more pigment. And then intensify this area while it's still kind of wet. Okay. All right, let's uh, go to the other side. I clean the brush again. I, I do that. I, it's very uh, second nature means uh, uh, subconscious to me. I do. I do that, and I don't really need the two sides to be exact, exactly symmetry. Actually, I'm the kind of artist that prefer it not to be, so I'll make that a little bit shorter. And then uh, soften this side for shadow, and then soften the other side for sh for the... Not shadow, actually, it's the, the uh, spreading of the pigment, the flower does itself. Don't you just love nature? Nature is just so awesome, right? The flower does that by itself. And then, oh, it's a big drop of uh, water coming from here, you know, and I don't usually let those kind of things bother me. Now, I'm going to let the middle part here um, dry a little bit before I go in and put in the, what do you call that, the, uh, put in the uh, yellow. And so the same thing, okay, I'm going to uh, clean the brush, clean it in the water nice and dry it. And then I'm going to spread it out again. Spread it out like this, and then I'm gonna dip it in the dioxazine purple a little bit first, and then I'm going to dip it also in the quinacridone violet because they're really just sisters. It makes the color more rich, and you see that I just, um, I just, uh, what do I, what did I just do? I just uh, let it the color mix in the, in the brush, right? Not necessary to line the whole thing. You do it some here and there, okay? Some here and there, and so we don't necessarily need to line the whole, the whole uh, flower. And some area more intense, maybe it's in the fold of the flower of the petal here, and so when they have a fold, of course the, the um, the color look more. I'm going to do this one time, this one, and this one for you guys to see, hopefully. Hopefully, if I don't run out of time. Can you believe that? If I <laughs> if I do this painting two times, you know, I mean, in two videos, I'm still running out of time. Oh, well. That could happen to me. And to me means to us. Okay, let's get, pick up a little bit more pigment. I wish I can. I'm going to rotate this, okay? It's like, I wish I can do it with my other hand. Okay, same thing. And the middle part is coming to life. So I, I guess uh, some people will call this dry brush. I think that that will be a good um, 
term to use it. It's they're called dry brushing. All right, and then uh, I need that part to be a little bit more. Um, I have more lines because as you can see, all the lines come over here. And so what I'm going to do is as an artist, you know, this is when I face with a, with a, a question mark, right? Then what I'm going to do is just use this and uh, so that there are more sharp line over here together with that. That's what I rescue myself. Yeah, so there's a line, there's a little bit sharp line, so it's balanced, right? Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is uh, go in and uh, do the yellow part because I, uh, and I use quinacridone uh, yellow medium. Okay. Not quinacridone, sorry, cadmium yellow medium. Mm, do the yellow part that come out here. Okay, and just kind of leave it, leave it kind of sharp. And then what I'm going to do is use uh, some, uh, the dioxazine blue purple, same thing. Okay, and then just uh, come in and slap down some color and then push it around, just soften it. Just uh, make some shadowy area over here because that goes in, right? So we kind of need the, to have a little bit of shadow over there. And push that around. When I put you know, the two brush over here. I'm just actually, well, I just did. And so this one is done. I think it's done for now until I come out, come back and see if there's any problem. I don't think so. And so let's work on these two, okay? Uh, let's work on this one. Then my hand will not be getting into the pro, um, you know, to destroy things, destroy the painting. <laughs> and so I saw, um, you know, I was very lucky to be able to see some of the, Okay, the same thing we're just painting the shadow okay and so since this this uh this um flower over here on the left side and the right side the smaller part they're not the uh they're not the focus of the two this is the focus and so we can uh do less detail okay and let's uh, remember to do that do less detail on here so as to the vein of this one, I'm just going to do one little line, one line over here, and that's the vein. Okay, define that a little bit better since it's a white, since it's a white flower. And I really like, um, I, I've always been like that. I really like flowers and uh, doing flowers when they are, when they are, um, now I'm going to use this small one. I can use the small one that I told you that it kind of broke. And uh, just with the dioxazine, I'm going to do the dioxazine. I, no, sorry. Uh, uh, Quinacridone violet. Okay, and so this, you know, you can see it's kind of dead. You know, but, you know, it's dead, but it has its use. So I'm going to just do that. Not as much as that part, okay? And the color should be gentler and not as sharp. Okay, and just uh, kind of, this is how I, you know, just kind of rub it out so it's not as sharp. Okay, and here I am going to rotate the whole painting. Rotate the whole painting and so I can use my right hand well and do this part. It goes in a little sharper, but it's not going to be sharp. As I'm going to scrub the, I'm going to not scrub as gently, soften the sharpness of those brush line. Okay, and then back to the, back to the original, and then I use as uh, my zero brush, and then do the vein just some here and there. Okay, just some here and there, and not sharp. Ah, that is too much water. Rescue myself. Okay, and then do this petal over here on the on the left side. I hope you I hope you can't hear my husband actually outside cleaning things. It's Saturday today and he decided to 
need to just, uh, you know, do some cleaning outside with his uh, machine. <laughs> and so, but if you do, you know, it's, it, it shouldn't be too loud. Same thing, okay? Just uh, come and pick up some pigment here. And so I, uh, because we didn't really quite understand the jungle, I went on a tour. You know, they have free tour that you can take with the native young man and they will explain everything to you. If you have questions, you can ask him. I guess it was kind of fun to be in our group because I asked so much question. I wanted to know about uh, durian and uh, and all the ages of the flowers. And I, I actually took a night night tour. <laughs> that was really fun. We uh, Okay. And for this part here, we're just going to do the shadow. Just do some uh, shadow. We let's make the shadow come out of here, okay? And and yeah, just just like that on the top. And uh, so we we'll dip some pink gray and just let it come out here from here because that's where the shadow should be. So this will become a more rounded of a cone instead of just a triangle. Yeah, just like that, okay? And uh, so we, um, you know, I am, uh, when I was young in Hong Kong, Hong Kong doesn't have as many as Malaysia. We have uh, something called the walking sticks. Love the walking sticks because we find it in the schoolyard and that was our entertainment for the duration that the uh, <laughs> the poor walking stick. Now I can spot something over here. The duration of the walking stick's life, right? And so we just love to play with it. And I, if there's a walking stick, I would not leave until the walking stick disappeared by itself. And so I knew that uh, during the night tour, they say it should be, um, uh, it should be there. And they say that they have a huge one, and we saw a huge one. Oh, I also did a sketching of the walking stick. And so we can, I will show you that. And uh, it was fun because I uh, I have decided on my own that I wanted to see a snake really, really bad in the jungle, you know. <laughs> we can hear the screeching of the pigs, of the wild pigs, and it was really funny. And they would be great. <laughs> I mean, like just you can hear it echoing into in the forest, right? But we never see one. Because we went hiking, as you, you know, there was one path you can actually leave the... Okay, this one, a little bit of shadow over here. Uh, you can actually leave the the walking area, the boardwalk, I guess you can call it. And so, of course, my husband and I, my daughter, went on that one. And, uh, and we saw um, a squash in the forest that is actually eaten. There's a teeth mark of a big bite being taken out. So we, we think that must be the wild pig. And so the young man that was taking us on the on the night tour, he said, oh, you want to see snake, huh? And ask everyone, and everyone said, yeah, 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 let's see some snake. Uh, if you can find one and show it to us. And um, so just the Quinacodone uh, uh, Violet, okay, for the inside over here, we're not going to make it, at least we're going to try not to make it as as uh, as thick as the, this one here. And uh, so they took us on that, and, and he looked and he said, well, snakes likes to go on bamboo because it's very smooth and easier for them to glide up. So we look all night, and to our dismay, there was no snake. Uh, there was like, you know, that group that was with us was like, how many people? I would say at least 15. We were not really loud. We had to take a flashlight, and he was showing us all kinds of animals. But mainly, I really like seeing the walking snake, uh, walking sticks, and that was really fun. And so we did that, and didn't see a snake. We we looked through all the bamboo of the forest, and there was no snake, and so that was okay. And then, and he said that you know, and it was the truth. Okay, let's use this uh, small broken broken brush, and uh, we didn't see uh, the snake, and. Uh, but um, he said that he told us that, that you would like the night, you know, because uh, it's a little bit more quiet. But they say if you if we're really bothered by the forest being so loud by the cicada, then the best thing is to go um, early in the morning 
And he said, early in the morning, you can actually see the... And one day I'm going to do that. Uh, oh, okay, give me a minute. Uh, hornbill, hornbill, that the really big bird flying through the forest. And he said, in the morning, only in the morning, then they will just fly through. And, uh, you know, I'm not like such a morning riser. Can't get up too early in the morning. Um, and so I didn't see a hornbill either. My daughter has seen it in, on, in the zoo as she was, you know, a missionary. She went to the zoo. We didn't see a orangutan either because orangutan now in in those Indonesia and, uh, you know, country, they, you, you know what they usually do is um, they just uh, soften it, okay? What they do is they actually uh, capture the birds and... Um, let uh, no uh, capture the orangutan and just let them out for the tourists to see. So we didn't go. I was, you know, if you believe me, you have to believe me. <laughs> it, it it was not a, it was not a. I mean, you know, I wouldn't call it a very very uh. You know, spoil myself kind of, you know, being a tourist, we didn't have good food. Oh, I have to tell you about the, about the food while we were painting. If I have time, okay. And so this one, this little um, flower over here is done too. And then let's do this one. Do this one because this is mainly, you know, should be a white flower, and we want it to kind of keep the integrity of that. Okay. So now just painting the shadow a little bit. Just use paint gray and uh, soften it. Okay. And uh, the same thing as these petals, okay? So this uh, this two one and then these two, okay? But let's do these two first and just use paint gray. Just mainly the shadowy area. Ooh, that was a very, very sharp shadow, huh? Okay, so we need to come in with a, with a soften that brush. And I'm very, very hard on the brush. And uh, just push out the, the lines, okay? Um, I'm hard on brush. As you guys have seen, you know, watching me paint for so long, there should be a shadow right there, and part of the part of the vein coming out. Uh, we, uh, like I say, it wasn't like too much of a. It wasn't too much of a really um, luxuries, you know. We well, there was only one hotel, and it was the Marriott, and the Marriott will charge only sixty bucks you know, a few years ago per night. And I was like, oh, wow, you know, that seems like to be a, a very uh, reasonable price. And when we get there, it was a really big room. And uh, But the problem is we uh, <laughs> we get in and uh, realize that we should have bring some, okay, let's make this, uh, put some shadow over here, okay? Make this part uh, become more of a roundish form. And uh, so we, we get there and we were like, oh, wow, you know, nice, you know, maybe it would be a nice hotel because I tried to find cheaper stuff and I couldn't. And there was nothing else but the Marriott and then a place that looked like, you know, you shouldn't, you know, you really shouldn't stay there. So uh, we go for the Marriott and it was only $60 and it was very nice and the surface was nice and the room was big. Well, it's because it was in such a remote area and it was funny. So we don't have food for breakfast and... <laughs> And lunch. <laughs> okay, and so, um, you know, I mean, they have breakfast and lunch, and it's kind of strange, you know, the food that they're serving, and also it's really, really expensive. So we don't have breakfast and lunch, and we were like, well, what, 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 what are we gonna do? And my daughter happened to have one bag of crackers, so, and then we went to the, you know, the gift shop in the hotel and tried to see if they have crackers, and they do, but it was like ten dollar US, and you know, for the life of me, I don't know why I'm so so cheap. Um, and I say, well, we're not going to pay that kind of price. <laughs> so we didn't eat breakfast. We didn't go into the hotel. And my husband thought <laughs> they're just really sweet. They they know their mom is kind of crazy. Their mom, me. <laughs> I, just can't, I just can't pay. I, I'm not going to pay that kind of price um, for a bag of crackers. You know, no way. Highway robbery. And so we were very sad and and we, uh, you know, tried to eat off my daughter's um, bag of crackers. And it was a big bag. So we just eat some and then we go hiking. And that was fine. And uh, until it must be like the second day or the third day morning, we were 
uh, kind of tired, you know, it was like, I mean, the, the, okay, the same thing, use this uh, uh, broken brush, okay, and just flick it, flick it in just a little bit, okay, and uh, we, and so we, uh, we, uh, we will just uh, say, okay, we're not going into the jungle. So what they do is they have a truck that take you into the jungle, but it wasn't like a fancy truck. It was a truck that you sit on the truck bed, you know, and uh, it, I mean, you know, it's no fancy surface. And uh, and so we say we're not going to go into the jungle yet until we uh, kind of refresh. So we're trying to refresh ourselves, but okay, the um, uh, I think uh, we can just go ahead and do that and use the zero brush and go in and get the Quinacridone violet again, okay, just uh, That's how I pick up color if I can I will show you guys but you know sometime I, I just you know forget or just too many things to do and uh, And so we start walking outside of the of the hotel just to walk out into the local uh, Village which you know, I can call it a village, but there's only You know couple houses there <laughs> really and uh, and and one of the, and then we walk there and we saw, we ran to it because we saw a lady selling bananas. And it was, the, it was not like, of course, the U.S. banana, nice and big and fat and juicy. It was uh, very small. Uh, well, I, I would say one third of the size. And we ran over there, they're selling bananas. <laughs> so, and it was, of course, you know, it was nothing. The price was like pennies, you know, in America. And I said, okay. Let's get the banana and we get to actually eat something <laughs> for but no, I will tell you about dinner though okay now so we soften the two sides and we're just gonna leave it like that okay let's go back to this broken brush here and we can dip that in the quinacridone violet or the dioxazine purple is up to you whatever you the purple the blue purple or the, the red purple okay and just do this flicking motion again Let's see, 37 minutes. Okay, just a second. I was going to go get a drink of water. I forgot and realized that I forgot to bring water into my into my filming area. Oh, well, I'll just do this without water. Just kill my throat, right? Who cares? Um, and uh, so we ate the banana and uh, we were refreshed and we were very happy. I think, you know, I, I am just very cheap. I am just too cheap. And... Uh, and uh, hate, hate, hate uh, things that are unjust and unfair. And so we finally uh, have decided to go with the banana. We will buy one box of their crackers for ten dollars US, and we bought that. And that uh, so for the next two days, we actually had breakfast. We eat the banana. It was so good. It was so good. It wasn't too sweet. I knew that it come from the local banana tree, right? So it's smaller. It's just more a natural kind of banana and wasn't too sweet it was just good i don't know it's like kind of hard to explain how good a banana tastes when it tastes like banana but not sweet hmm huh. you know anyway <laughs> so we got to eat that and i'm gonna use the same brush i don't want and use the uh, cadmium yellow medium and do some yellow in the middle okay so the flower part is mainly done i'm going to put a little bit of a background over here and then we will go on to the trunk okay the 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 and uh, which is oh let's uh, do some moss over here too okay but first thing let's uh, put a little bit of uh like yesterday when we were going through the background of the uh, indigo color okay we use the indigo color because this will help us bring out this the the beauty of that petal and i don't want to you know lose that okay while it's wet and uh, we clean the brush again so there's no pigment and we pull the pull the pigment out Okay, pull the pigment out so it's light, but if you want this to be a little bit darker, which ah, we can do that, or I think it's actually quite good, you know, and disperse the pigment. Look how pretty watercolor can do. And we covered those those things, you know, when we do watercolor, we really want to use the characteristic of the watercolor. And then I might put some, let's put some purple, the blue purple, dioxazine purple here. And then um, put some phthalo green. How's that? All these colors, they mix very well together. So you can have confidence that you can just do that. You don't have to wait until they are, uh, you know, and they will merge into a kind of beauty. It's very nice. And, uh, and the cadmium yellow medium. 
you know, and all these just suggest that there are other flowers in the distance or in the close distance, in the far distance, okay? Now, because I put so much water here, it's coming into this, you know, and I can just wait a minute. Yeah, let's, oh, no, 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 it's actually kind of dry. And then I'll actually bring that in. It doesn't bother me, okay? I actually make this petal, petal merge, merge into the merge into the background. I actually quite like that. Uh, maybe do a little bit of color over here, okay? A little bit of um, indigo over this area. Don't really have time. I need to, I need to get going with this uh, area. So now what we're gonna do is, uh, I think this will do the job. Now what I'm gonna do is like this is me, okay? I'm just gonna shape this and I will shape that into a point. Now it's pointy enough. But since it's so old, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some green moss here and there. And so what I'm going to use is sap green. And what that will do is that will actually bring out the, the beauty of the root. Okay, and then in a minute you will see what I will, how I will just uh, do that. I, I'm going to do them kind of like they're going out in patches because... You know, well, from what I understand, when I go hiking, moss are like that. Okay, and then I'm just gonna let that go for now. There's this little area, and I want some moss in there. Okay, and then uh, uh, I hope I'm not filming outside. And then I'm going to just keep putting on moss and not worry about this dark area until in a minute you will see. Okay, I'm gonna let it have some dots over there and then uh, I will come back and show you what I'm gonna do. Then this color is sap green. And so for dinner, we were very lucky. Um, we were going to be, we were going to be in trouble because, you know, uh, we went the first night for dinner and the price was actually quite expensive, but the food was extremely good, you know. It was from the native uh, native tribal people. My daughter actually speaks Malay and a little bit of Iban. Iban is um, some of the tribal people. And one of her companions as a missionary were um, from that culture. So she, uh, uh, she actually were able to learn some from her, you know, and it was very fun. We were in the there was some uh, man that was guarding us in the tour and she actually saw some people that she can actually talk to and so she of course she wanted to keep up her language right and so she did that and it was very fun to see that that she uh, speak the language so well and uh, and so she was uh, uh, as uh, as we were going then we there was a group we were so lucky you say Kathy you got really lucky um, there was a group of, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, the the caving people. They come from different part of uh, the, uh, you know, Indonesia or something. And they were there. And so uh, the hotel had decided that, okay, because they were there, they were, um, they uh, actually uh, opened up their buffet for us. <laughs> so we got really lucky again. <sighs> And because, uh, you know, with my cheapness and my poor husband and daughter. Okay, now we need to let that area kind of dry a little bit. But we are going to use, uh, actually, we're going to use uh, burn umber, okay? And darken this shadow, this area, and make it a little bit more shadowy. And then I'm going to dot it, you know, kind of dot it to show that this is a moss. And that's how I choose to portray that. It seems to work, I kind of like it. Okay, and you know, so make sure that this area is darker, right? Because they are indeed in the shadow. So we should respect the, and trust the rule, the, and trust the rule of art and make sure make this area a little darker, okay? And then I'm going to dot it so that it will look like moss. I hope it does to you. Okay, and that's it. And then I'm going to do the branch, which is kind of fun too. 
Okay, now, um, okay, I'm gonna start just over here. Um, from over here, you know how I usually do the branch, right? I am, uh, I am a sepia junkie. <sighs> and this is sepia, so, um, let's do, let's use the burn umber plus black, okay, this time. Burn umber plus black, so that we won't run into the same color with the root. Okay, let's start over, oh no, I need to start over here. Okay, and a uh, very uh, abstract or not in much detail, okay? Try to do your best when you're going around the moss. If you cover up the moss, then it's just too bad, you know? We don't worry about it because it is very intricate in that area. Now, I just went and picked up some more pigment so that... I uh, so that I have, um, you know, because the pigment was and going around the root is also a little bit hard. But just practice it, you know, don't really worry about it too much. Okay. Now I'm at this point, I'm get, getting to this point, I'm going to pull the pull some of the color out like this, okay. So we were very lucky we got to eat uh pull the color out like this and i'm going to intensify that area with some more of the black color okay and i always do my branches almost always like this you know nothing that is uh okay and then i'm cleaning cleaning the brush so no pigment now okay and then i'm gonna gently just kind of pull it out to the edge and then I will just leave it alone for now. And then maybe I'll add a dry brush some texture onto it, okay? And you can see that the branch is already forming its shape. And then I will go in, you know, just, it's just a little bit of a careful work, you know, because you're going into a very intricate area right now, okay? And I had to go into the moss, which is very, uh, you know, very intricate, but, you know, it has to be done. And so the buffet were really, really good. We, uh, you know, they put the, you know, the, it was really the native people's cooking, you know, it was just good food. We learned to eat uh, beef rundown, <laughs> and that was really, really good. Now I'm going to wait a, a little bit and then blend the color in. Beef rundown, that was good, and... Uh, you know, it was just good food. And after one day of being in the in the jungle, you come home and very tired. You know, not was I, I was not really used to that kind of uh, hiking. You know, walking on sand that are saturated, and with my knee hurting. You know, <sighs> but now I know how to exercise and uh, kind of help my knee, so it's better. But I still go hiking. You know, but my knee doesn't hurt. But during that trip, my knee hurts. But I was glad, you know, because, you know, we were already in Asia. And so, you know, need to just go do it, you know, because I know that we won't take the time to come back. And, uh, you know, don't know if we will ever go back to that forest. And if we do, we'll make sure we bring crackers, right? You know, for breakfast. And we were very lucky that there were a group of uh, caving people from Indonesia or else we would never uh, been able to have uh, every night have buffet dinner. <laughs> Good thing we find those banana, right? And that was so happy, you know. And most happy was probably my daughter, and my husband, because, you know, they think that their mom is very uh, crazy, would not let them buy crackers, and would not let them um, go eat the buffet. <laughs> ah, the price is so expensive, you know. I mean, and not buffet, the breakfast, whatever breakfast they serve, you know, and so. Ah, crazy. I don't know. Sometimes I'm kind of crazy. I just, you know, uh, I am cheap and I get into this, uh, you know. Oh, no, we need to save money. We can't spend money on that like that, you know. Oh, come on, Kathy, you're all the way over there. And your family is hungry. <laughs> and then you split the box of crackers. And my husband, you know, he knows me. He's like, I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> 
Okay, so isn't that uh, pretty? I kind of like it. I kind of like how it turned out, okay? So I'm gonna just uh, dry brush a little bit over here, okay? Just to make sure that there's some texture, some texture of the, of the tree, okay? Dry brush it, and then I'm gonna come in and soften it. Because, you know, every time you have very, very sharp line over here, people's eye is gonna go over there, and then that's not where you want them to go, okay? And then uh, this little branch here, and uh, no problem, it's the same thing. Let's see, where should I? Let's pretend the light is that way, okay? So we can do it like this. We saw Firefly one night. One night we saw the Firefly. But we really, you know, seeing that, you know, how that was going to be growing was like really kind of fun. Okay, let it, let it, let it go a little bit. Let's do this branch and then we'll come back and soften that area. Because my brush you know i can feel it and that's what i always um you know talk to you guys about right you know uh, after you um practice a lot you can just feel the water and then you know when you should touch it and when you should just let it be and the time to let it be and not touch it too much is when it's full of water okay and so i decide to just uh, like see i can still soften that line but I give it a second so it's not so puddly. Okay, and then I say, you know, it needs some brown in it. So I'm gonna come in and drop in some brown color. Because I didn't use brown, I used just water. Okay, and do the same thing over here. Okay, that's usually how I do branches. And so there's uh, this area and we're gonna we're gonna do this first, do this uh, branch that I kind of decided that I needed to do that. And let's um, do, do it this way or that way. Let's do it that way. Okay, I need to turn this so that my right hand can go like this, okay? And uh, I don't want it to be too sharp. So there will be quickly, I'm going to go come in here and and dilute the water so it's not so sharp. Because it is behind the, it is behind the, you know, the leaves, okay? So the line should not be too sharp. It's just a supporting row that you know that there is a branch there. But for the composition, that's why I added it. Okay, and just a little bit, a little bit more of um, brown color over here. Okay, so that it's not totally lost. And that's good. And you can see the branch back there, right? And uh, to define the branch even more, I'm going to come in here when it's a little bit more dry and uh, put in a little bit of blue. All right, and then, now let's do this inside part of the branch and so the inside part of the branch is mainly mainly black color mixed with pinks gray and mixed with a little bit of uh, burn umber on the brush okay and then I'm gonna start from this area because I want I need it to be dark so the changing of value between this brown color and this black color make make it so you can see that there's a hole there right and then i don't want it to be too much of that uh, without brown so i'm going to go back into the burn umber and then mix the let the color mix on the page you know even drop some of the color over here but you can see that there's a broken kind of branch with a deep hole there right and then uh, now i'm going to use a small brush and uh, browned out this area so it is cleaner okay and then you can see that there's a separation right and just kind of do this and then uh, just to make sure the line is not so sharp come in with a clean brush and soften that line isn't that nice that's very nice right and then uh, if you want to you can like kind of put some I don't know uh, put some kind of use a black color okay and put some texture in here put some texture in here like the texture that's over here 
you can just kind of put that in there and I'm going to soften that you know no harsh line okay no harsh line over here and no harsh line definitely over here And there it is, and that's good enough, okay? No harsh line, no harsh line, okay. And then I'm going to come in here, uh, probably with my trusty, and uh, use uh, indigo. Indigo is nice, and, and it's a contrast, the blue and the brown is a contrast. And just kind of do this, so that you can see that there is a branch there. And soften this color, and then I go in with uh, some phthalo green and then keep going right there with that line make sure that the color merge together nicely okay sorry and that is a puddle of color and pull that out okay pull that out you can also dry the brush a little bit if you think that you have too much and then pull that color out and you can even drop some yellow here just to make this area come alive um okay all right and then uh i think that that is all i have promised to do with this painting and um we have all this area nicely established and thank you so much for painting this with me it has been very very fun and talking with you guys and having a real good time hopefully you have a real good time too and uh, and hopefully you will um really uh try this i might go and intensify this area I think I will. Okay, I'll just do it to let you see it. Okay, because I think it's a little too um, muted. So that just to bring out the, to bring out the, the petal and the whiteness of it. Okay, just a little bit. Okay, and that's it. Okay, and thank you so much. And um, hope you try it. And thank you very much. I'll see you in the next painting. Bye-bye.